Oh crap. Dang it, now I gotta walk all the way over there with all these stones. Oh yeah. Go ahead. Okay, get just get get your stamina back, my boy. I mean, you know about to keep breathing in my ear. Like strength, manliness, bravery, independence, gallantry, integrity. Laughed a lot and began his tale. Went from a total mute to a master of ceremony. What are you doing here? I, I what the freak what the freak is you doing? Go to go to bed. I'm talking to him right now. Right. What's good, YouTube? Back with another video. And this time we're back on Medieval Dynasty. Thank you so much for the support on all my videos. Um, I really enjoy this game. It's like, it's not very dangerous, except for when I get killed by a tree. Uh -huh. Um, but I like building and starting a whole place. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into it. So look what I did. Look what I did. Look at that. I didn't, I didn't got us a little civilization. It's a little one, just a little one. Oh my gosh, I got no stamina. What the freak? Yeah, it's not the um my place isn't far off from the place that we started at. Well, of course you already know that because I was running back and forth between this place and other place getting supplies and junk. I do need to eat though. I'm kind of starving. I need to go make some more money. Which I can make money by building things and selling them. <clears throat> but first, we need to hurry up and get this uh job done. So we got two jobs right now. Um. The Renage story. Uh, we gotta wait for next summer for him. And then Unigos story. So, I guess we're gonna talk to Unigos, cause um her story is so freaking far. I gotta just go travel for that for that. Where are you at? Oh, there you are. Uh hello Ransomir. How are you getting settled? The valley's treating me nicely so far. That's wonderful, Ransomir. But you've come at a poor time. My duties at, as a castellan await me. Oops. Uh, I didn't mean to click that. <laughs> yes. I'm not sure, to be honest. There's been a murder. Oh, my. I, think, I thought things like this don't happen here too often. Because they don't. I'm just about to go to the crime scene and question the witnesses. And I honestly don't know what to expect. Um, I'm sure you take good care of the matter. Time will tell. Yes, even it will break. What? Yes, even it will break. Jokes aside, Ransomir, that's a really serious matter. I won't be able to share mo more stories with you at the moment, but I believe there is someone who, who you should meet. His name is Sambor. He was one of us. The pack, I mean. Are you serious? And he lives here? In the valley? That's right. All of them do, actually. Here, I've marked Sambor's house on your map. You should pay him a visit. Great, I'll go there right away. But beware. Calling Sam more friendly is like calling being stung by a bee right on top, right on the tip of your manhood pleasant. Damn. Whoa. Oh, I'm guessing you're exaggerating. Oh, no. I'm sure you're exaggerating. He's part of the uh, the remind reminders, after all. Don't say I didn't warn you. I'll be on my way, then. Yeah, how bad it could he be? Why is he so far away? Oh my gosh. I gotta walk over there? Maybe I will be able to get some berries along the way because I'm I'm kind of like hungry. I die of starvation. So now we journey off somewhere far away. Yes, I'm gonna walk in the water because I'm dirty. Gosh dang it! Don't run for me. Oh, there we go. I wonder if I could upgrade my weight because it's really hard. It'd be really hard to be building those stuff. It take all. It take a long time to build houses and other stuff. I also got this type of sense thing too that I unlocked. I can sense a whole bunch of sticks and uh like little stuff like berries. I wonder if he lives in a city or do he live alone or not city village. I wonder if he live in, live in a village or does he live alone? Discover animal spot wolf. Uh oh. Oh my gosh, is that one of them? Oh, hell no, man. Stop playing with me. No, oh, he do live alone. Well, not really. I mean, I think he do. What's good, ball man? I think you're lost, boy. 
Sorry. I didn't mean to dist. Wait a second. Look me in the eye. And stop shivering for crying out loud. Huh. Black and blue. You're Eorden's family, aren't you? Yes, my name is Ransomir. You must be Sambor then. How do you know? And how do you know that? I was I was talking with Unigos. He told me that you are part of the Reminders as well. Part of what now? Um, the pack? The one with Unigos and Yordan? I've never heard an idiotic name in my life. <laughs> oh, sorry. Maybe I made a mistake. We were called the Undying Fist. Uh, well, I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I like the reminders more than Undying Fist. Oh my, that's so much worse. Whatever. What do you know? What are you, like 12? Normally I would argue with you about that, but I'm afraid you'll kick the bucket during this dispute, old man. Ah, ah. Oh my gosh. Oh, there is something. I would kick for sure. So smart choice, not. What? Anyway. I would love to hear more about stories from my uncle and the packs of adventures together. That's an amazing coincidence, because I would love to spend my time telling you telling old tales by by the crackling fire. Oh my, really? No. Leave my property and forget where it was. Damn! <laughs> you, you saw that you should have seen that coming for real. Oh come on, it'll only take a moment. A moment a moment of a moment, really. Just tell me. What was my uncle like? How did you become part of the Rem the Undying Fist? And um what did you do exactly as a pack? You don't know what we did? You know those didn't get to that part. Eh, alright. But be quiet and try to be less than annoying. Where should I begin? Right. It all started when Jordan left his home. He was eighteen at the time, if I remember correctly. The clever Boston was always too big of a fish for his birth birthplace. Uh, he knew that. Left as soon as he could. But cleverness at such a young age always means two things: being arrogant and hot-headed. His plan to set out on a um, his plan was to set out on a big adventure. That's it. Pretty detailed, huh? Path like that is paved with skeletons of young idiots. But none of them was Jordan. Either way, uh, he was wandering for days. Days too soon turned to weeks, and his rations into dust. He was useless as a hunter. But back then, oh, back then at least, so berries and mushrooms was all he could get. So obviously he needed some coins. That's all like me for real. <laughs> I'm eating berries. Only berries. I haven't had mushrooms yet. He came across a manor with orchards so vast they seemed like an ocean. He already managed to find some work there. A week of back-breaking labor had passed. His hands were covered in blisters, skin red from the scorching sun, knees pulsating from pain. I must say, you're really an amazing storyteller. I wasn't expecting that. Shut up. You want me to finish? Where was I? Alright. He was exhausted from the extraneous work he's done. Went to the lord of the manor and with a smile on his face to collect the payment. His stomach was already full with fantasies of all the delicious treats he was dreaming of buying. And all that was ruined by the hand of the lord holding a couple of lousy coins. Jordan was furious. He was merely a fraction of the pay he was supposed to acquire. He started out. He started shouting at the at the Lord, demanding justice. Peasants were peasants and flies to the Lord. <laughs> Disgusting, replaceable insects. And what do you do with a fly which buzzes too loudly? Both of the Lord's palms were struck. Wait, both of the Lord's palms struck the Jordan's ears with the strength of an ox. Golly, Jordan fell to the ground, and the Lord's guards threw him out of the manor like garbage, stealing the few pathetic coins while doing so. If I may add. It wasn't even, uh, it wasn't until evening that Jordan regained his hearing. Golly. And with it came fervent thought, thought of revenge. Your uncle was quite a capable fighter when I met him ten years later. But he wasn't back then. He knew the guards would massacre him if he, only, if he came close. So he needed to find another way to fulfill his vengeance. Jordan was always ambitious, but the hatred fueled him like nothing more. And what happened next? What came later was me becoming bored of this conversation. Go away. No way. You can't leave me like this. I can do whatever I want. Scram. I have things to do. What things? I'll do them for you. I'll do anything you want. Just please tell me the whole story. Dang, you're so annoying. Please, 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 please. Fine. Just shut up already. Just say what needs to be done. You won't regret it. 
Here, grab this shovel. It's a piece of crap, but I'll, it will do. They, uh, there are clay deposits behind the house. Go there and dig up some clay for me. Yeah, on it, boss. Let's do this. Even though I already had a shovel. You said behind the house? Is this it? Oh, yep, it is. Dang, that was five clay already. What the freak? I need one more, though. Here's all the clay you wanted. Will you finish your story now? All right, all right. So, I was, as, already, as I've already said, you already wasn't much of a fighter back then. He didn't have any money nor connections, but he had one thing, an unusual ability. ability. You see, from an early age, Jordan was especially a good liar. No sweaty palms, no voice cracks, no te no tells really. Uh, calm, steady breaths. Eye contact held it with all the way. He eventually managed to handle any kind of pressure, even in the craziest situations. But it wasn't that at first. He felt no pressure lying, no stress at all. Oh wait, it was natural for him as breathing. He had absolutely no remorse. Listen. He came up with a plan. A plan so immensely uh, moronic and unrealistic, that's really hard to believe that it worked so perfectly. At first, he convinced a nearby town sailor to sell him a whole set of clothes worthy of most wealthy noblemen. The finest fabric, silken threads, you name it. Horrendously expensive. So how did the man so how did he manage? So how did he manage to afford it, you may ask? It's simple. He didn't pay for it. So he stole it. I said no such thing. Jordan wasn't a thief. Not in the traditional meaning of the word, at least. Apart from that, did I finish the darn story? Or, oh yeah, did I finish the darn story? <clears throat> While wearing his new clothes, he traveled to the castle of the king that of that realm and entered it. Okay, okay. Now I know you're making all, all this up. That's simply impossible. <laughs> you're absolutely right. It is mad to even consider trying to pull that off. But Jordan, he just walked straight in. I don't blame you for doubting me. Darn. I would have I would have been first to doubt a thing like that if I didn't see him doing it a hundred times later with my own eyes. Anyway, he walked right he walked right into the castle, and once he was there, he followed through with his plan. Which was betting his wife. Whose wife? The king's. What the, the hell? king's wife? Mm-hmm. So, the queen. Indeed. So let me get this straight. The plan was to get in the castle and lay with the queen? Exactly that. You were right. This is most er this is the most sur absurdly idiotic plan I've ever heard of. I told you, but it worked like a charm. I still don't get it. What worked? What was it he accomplished by that? After the lovemaking, he dressed up, deliberately leaving the undergarments on the bedside, and told the queen he'll be right back with some refreshments. Then he went to one of the king's guards and told him that he saw the queen with the company of a strange man sneaking into the chambers. Golly. The guard rushed in and went to the queen naked in the bed in the bed with the man's clothes right next to her. As a loyal servant, a guard reported the matter directly to the king himself, who, as you can probably imagine, became furious to say the least. <laughs> he couldn't really punish his wife. That would be bad for his reputation, but he could pursue her lover. Unfortunately for him, at this point Yurin was long gone to the castle, riding a beautiful bay mare he borrowed from the stable in the sunset. Dang, I can't read. I cannot read to save my life. I still don't get it. You see, the king didn't ha didn't catch the filthy seducer, but it didn't mean he couldn't track him down and find him. To do so, the only track he could follow was um was the one thing Jordan left behind, except his undergarments and pleasurable memory of the queen, his name, not his real name of course, the name he used in introducing himself to the queen, the Lord of the Orchards. Precisely. Now you get it. Dang, dang, you really set him up. <laughs> That's incredible, but the Lord's head must have left um, the company of his body pretty promptly. He didn't get killed. That wouldn't be uh, in the Jordan style. The king begged for his life to be spared, so the king threw him in a dungeon, where he spent the, the days he had left. Dang. Jordan was amazing. All that was just the power of his wits and speech. He surely uh, showed the Lord that he shouldn't have wronged him. Don't get the wrong idea about his reasons. Jordan didn't get through all of that because he wanted the Lord, he, because of what the Lord did to him. You see, the Lord was cruel, merciless brute. He mistreated all of his subjects, killed for fun, raped for sport. Uh, people like him used to call it a laundry man. Because one of his habits was drowning his bastards in the lake right after birth, like unwanted kittens. Dang. 
He would have needed to stop him, and he did, but that's not the end of the story. After the Lord's capture, uh, someone had to take his place. He didn't have any rightful successor, but then, uh, with just an uncanny perfect timing, came a distant cousin of the Lord's, Lord's, a charming young man with two different eyes. You have, you have to be kidding me. He easily acquired all the possessions of his sentenced rel relative, but Jordan didn't want any of that, not for himself. So he took only three bags of coins from the treasury and left everything else in the hands of the peasants. Uh, they were elated. He was probably, he still probably worshipped there. I can tell you that. Oh, one more thing. Why three bags, you might ask? That's easy. One for the tailor, one for the stableman, uh, he took the horse from, and the last one for himself. With the exact amount of his points he was rightfully supposed to earn for his work at the orchard. I told you, Yordan wasn't a thief. And that was it. He mounted his beautiful mare and left his realm, uh, continuing his adventures. At least that's the story he used to tell us. So nothing of that may be true. <laughs> but that's just how it, oh, that's just how it was with Yordan. Huh? Yordan. I <laughs> said Yordan. Um, now that I understand what you and Unigars were talking about, he really does seem surreal. I've never met anyone like that. Don't get me wrong, he had his flaws, but the things he could do, his tongue wasn't even silver. Uh, it was made of pure gold. But wait, you didn't tell me of the purpose of the Undying Fist. Oh, I thought it would be obvious now. On that day, Yoda's mission was born. He knew that he had spoiled riding elites like that, or, oh my gosh, were scattered around the world, draining life and the dignity from the hard, working, simple folk. And that, he was capable of stopping them. To some extent, at least. So that's exactly what he started doing. Overthrowing corrupt lords and giving back to the community. He sounded like a hero. A true hero. Well, it wasn't like... I mean, he... Yeah, I guess you could say that. So how did you join the pack? Jordan was working solo until he met Unigos. The rat's agile fingers could work where Jordan's tongue didn't. And then, they needed someone with other talents that were lacking. Like strength, manliness, bravery, independence, gallantry, integrity... Right, I think I get the picture. <laughs> Bro was hyping himself up. So they recruited the best there was. I was between jobs at the time, so I gave them a chance. And finally, the pack started to really make a difference. But I don't like to brag. Oh yes, I noticed. <laughs> Humble to the bone. Thank you for noticing. People at my level don't need to boast about our skills. Just like the sun doesn't need to prove it's bright. Anyhow... I already spoke more words to you than I did in the last five years to anybody. So it's time for you to go. And preferably don't come back. Ever. It was a treasure. It was a... <laughs> Why did you read it? Yeah, I don't care. Leave now. And in return for giving away my collection, my location, deliver this delicious meal to Unigos. It's his favorite. A knuckle sandwich. Uh... You want me to hit him in the face? Did I stutter? Uh, no, sir. Of course, sir. I'm on my way, sir. You want me to punch him? Golly! That's y'all was friends! Oh my gosh, finally made it back. Oh my, I'm from that walk, long old, long old trip. That's the furthest I didn't ever travel from this place. Uh -huh. I didn't ever travel from this place. I wonder if I could just go in this house and like talk to him. It's always nice to see Ransom here. Nuno goes, hello, I've been ta I've uh, talked to Sambor. He's a real sweetheart, isn't he? <laughs> uh, the sweetest, like a jar of honey. That's Sambor for you. <laughs> I see. He did tell me about my uncle, though. The story about the Lord of the Orchards. He has some unexpectedly good story storytelling skills, doesn't he? Yes, he really does. I was downright astonished by that. One time, I swear, for... I he went for over a year without speaking a single word. But when he was sitting by a fire, he remembered some uh, antidote. Laughed out loud and began his tale. Went from a total mute to a master of ceremonies. What are you doing here? I, I what the freak? What the freak is you doing? Go to go to bed. I'm talking to him right now. Right. <laughs> the narrative was so grip was so gripping. It was hard not to listen. He even did voices. But after finishing his sight, he became silent again. I've never fully understood the side of him. A theater genius trapped in the body of a bear wrestler. <laughs> he, actually, uh, he asked me to give you something. Really? And what? And what is that? A knuckle sandwich. Yeah, that sounds like Sambor. So are you going to deliver? 
Can't. I'm afraid I lost it somewhere on the way. Smart lad. But if you ask, I'll tell him you knocked me out cold. Just out of curiosity. What did someone tell you about him becoming part of the pack? This is you were looking for him the best to recruit, and he was an obvious choice. Yeah, that seems like something he would say. Uh, isn't that the truth? It's not a pleasant memory, but I believe you deserve to know the whole story. We didn't recruit him. Well, I guess we did. Jordan did, but that wasn't a matter of choice. When Jordan and I started following his mission together, we were rather successful. Everything was going smoothly. Too easy, even. <laughs> we were doing a lot of good, putting many well-deserved smiles on oppressed faces. That's when we let our guard down. There was a secret uh, guild formed by the new, by a few of the higher-ranking knights and barons. We called them the Vendors. A bunch of really heartless bastards. Uh, their most lucrative business was selling a living merchandise. And no, I'm not talking about animals. Please don't say it. Slavery, slavery was strictly forbidden in that realm. The queen was adamant about that. Well, the vendors had their own set of rules to follow. They caged them like cattle, mostly women and children, forced to, forced to fight rats for the poor little rations they were being given in the damp dungeon they were hit, held in. The guild preferred quantity, quantity over quality, so they didn't care about diseases, and they didn't tend, and they didn't tend to wounds. I think I'm gonna be sick. Sometimes it took them weeks to get uh, the dead out of the cages. Survival of the fittest, or rather outlasting of the least force fortunate. It was simply horrible if you ask me. All of the darned guilt deserved a cruel slow death. But that wasn't how we operated. You already made it very clear from day one. We were never to talk, take a life. That was the most important of rules. Anyway, we managed to get everyone out. The cages full of broken people. Even the horses kept their heads low morning. The despair in the air was even more poisonous than the stench of the rotting flesh. And in all that, we forgot to make ourselves safe as well. We were called by the mercenaries who, bought, who brought us uh, to the fortune chamber. Yeah, this gruesome place had an even worse room hidden inside. Unbelievable. The vendors weren't in their patient mood, but they sent their worst torture right away. I was horror struck, truly petrified, could barely breathe. Jordan didn't say a word just looked at me. His eyes were relaxed but focused. I realized he wanted me to be calm uh, as well, but I just couldn't. He went first. The torturer strapped Jordan to a chair and he started swinging. His fists were like anvils. Every hit drew blood or broke bones. In a matter of seconds, Jordan's face looked like a bloody pulp. The only thing poking through it was his smile. And it was one of the many times I wondered if he was even human. The torturer quickly realized that he needed different tools for the unique specimen he went uh, for a unique specimen, and he went to grab his blades. That's when Jordan started talking. He was making offers one after another, but the torture just kept carving his torso, like he was preparing steak to be grilled. There was so much blood, I could taste it in my mouth. I wanted to pass out, just to run away from all that, but I couldn't. My heart was pounding way too fast. That's horrible. Suddenly, the torture stopped. He looked at me and back at Jordan. This was the only thing he said. If you're lying, you're going to watch me do the same thing to him. I was about to puke, but Jordan just nodded, so he untied us both and helped us escape. There were more mercenaries on our way, heavily armed. No one stopped us, even if they even they were terrified of that guy. We managed to get out of one piece. Well, we managed to get out of there alive. Jordan wouldn't heal for weeks, and even after that, he was scared. He was scarred so badly. It looked like he had a chain mail stitched to his skin. But he had escaped death. And this missionary became one of us. The torture, it was somber, wasn't it? Yes. Uh. I have no words. <laughs> I'm so sorry this happened to you. Don't be. The path we walked on, it was our choice. We knew the risk. How could you want a person like that among your troop? You think I want a cutthroat anywhere near me? I couldn't get a wink of sleep with him around for days. I was constantly watching my back, watching his every move. So why didn't you blow him off? That's simple. You already made a deal with him. Promised him the only thing that mattered to that brute, which was money. A whole lot more than the guilt was paying him. And a cut from every heist that we did. But couldn't you just pay him off or run away? That's not the way Yordan did things. That's not the way Yordan did things. <laughs> he was a master liar. 
but when he gave someone his word for real, he never backed down. Besides, as we later found out, Summer wasn't evil in his nature. He was just a true soldier. He did was that did what was asked of him. He only spent hours talking with him, explaining our ruler rules of conduct. Summer never broke any of them, not once. That's incredible. Your lies, I mean. I didn't think I'd be able to handle all of that. Honestly, I hope you will never have to. I've been through a lot. And after all these years, uh, the thing I wish for you the most is to have boring, steady life. Uh, I'm not the type of person to get bored. There's always something to do. I'm glad to hear that. And my next request won't be as boring to you at all. Sure thing, what do you need? I need you to go to Boro. Uh, find Ida and get my scythe back from her. Uh, consider it done. Oh my goodness. Story is long. What the freak? <laughs> Alright, we are finally here. I'm <laughs> always oh, just going through the water. I wonder if we can make boats. Probably not. Probably not. Oh, she's gotta be in the house. I'm tripping. Hello, Ida. <laughs> Hello. Do I know you? Hello, Ida. I'm here for you to go scythe. Take a hike, kid. One at fair and square. One. Ha! Huh. That little snake didn't tell you about that, huh? That figures. I don't know what you mean. He only wanted me to get his scythe back. It's my scythe now. Okay, okay, relax. What can I do to get your scythe then? You can buy it from me, of course. Or we could play for it. What's the game? I'm not paying for that. You miss me with that. The saying that Unigos <laughs> The saying that made Unigos lose all his money and the scythe. Haha. <laughs> A game of riddles. Uh oh. How was it played? Simple. I say three letter three riddles. You must answer all of them correctly. One mistake and the game is over. You win, you get the scythe. And if I lose, I'll go easy on you this time. If you lose, you don't owe me anything. You just forfeit the chance of getting the scythe for free. Okay, hit me with the riddles. Oh my, I'm not very good with riddles. <laughs> First one. What disappears the second you say its name? Mm. Silence. Correct. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Whew. Okay, right, ready for the next one? Here it is. Feed me and I live. Yeah, give me a drink and I die. What am I? This gotta be fire. Oh, you're good. Better than Mr. Big Castle already. But can you get the final one? Listen carefully. I can fly, but I have no wings. I can cry, but I have no eyes. Wherever I go, darkness follows me. What am I? So, <laughs> I can fly, but I have no wings. I can cry, but I have no eyes. Wherever I go, darkness follows me. What am I? Mm. Dang. I can fly, but I have no wings. I can cry. Whenever I do, darkness follows me. A cloud, right? Easy. Darn, you're sharp. Congratulations, you win the old man's crappy scythe. It doesn't get better than that. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the game. I had fun. Take care. Woo That's crazy. I got all that for what the freak? Go through the freaking door. What is wrong with you? I got all that in the first try. That took is insane. You know, goes. You're back already? Or you're back already? Hey, you know, ghost, I got your scythe. Splendid. Um, were there any troubles on the way? Um, not at all. Good lad. I have news. Songbird's looking for you. Or Sandbird's looking for you. For me? Are you sure? I've been told he asked about the one with the funny eyes and stupid face. I see. Okay, then. I won't, prolong, I won't prolong his this humiliation and go find him. I bet you I still can't build nothing else, either. I can! I can build another house! Finally! Small farm. Reach small farm development level. Okay. 
You're not go ahead and start building everything. Yes, uh I guess all there is to it is to get to it. Timber! Oh my gosh. There we go. The house is complete. Nice. All right, now she can live. She can live here. There you go. And now she's just unhappy, and we did it. We built. We got our house ready and everything. Hey, old friend. Yeah. So honestly, I was about to end it, but I changed my mind. I didn't do enough. I mean, at least I didn't feel like I did enough. So. We gonna construct a hunter's building lodge. Or maybe I should end it every season. That'd be cool. So right now my goal, hold on, let me make sure I'm recording, okay. My goal right now is to build a hunter's lodge. So what do I need to build that? Now you just unhappy. I built you a whole house. Like, ain't none of y'all helping me. <laughs> oh dang, I'm starving, I'm gonna die. Uh oh. Dang, I got no money. I said I was supposed to be building stuff for, to sell. Timber! <laughs> okay. Uh, I need to hurry up. I'm dying. I'm about to die. Hey, old friend. Whatever What's you need, up? I've got it. Oh, I know. Uh... Oh, crap. Dang it. Now I gotta walk all the way over there with all these stones. Oh yeah, go ahead. Okay, get just get get your stamina back, my boy. I'm not about to keep breathing in my ear. I think I'll put everything else up and end the season. Uh, sadly, it's so dark. All right, it's time for the next season. I think the next season is fall. Traveling merchant. Whoa. Choose answer. A traveling merchant is visiting your settlement. He presents you his wares and tells you about the faraway land he saw. For Robert Price, he can teach you a few tricks about haggling. Uh. I walk outside. It's getting cold. I think it's a fall now. Is that a mushroom? Alright, now we can finish building a hunter's lodge, though. I should get these stumps out of the ground. Yeah, let me go put let me go put some stuff in these other people's houses to, in case they need it. Okay, so this is the first uh pair of houses that I made. They still got food to last them. Uh have some berries.
Almost done. Almost. Yes, sir. Uh, got that hunting lodge now. Let's go. Agnes, you're going to have to do it. Even though you angry is free. Oh, they need food now. All right. Now I should go probably fire with the money so I can get the bow and junk. Oh, wait. First, let me make some traveler land. Because that doesn't make sense. Just have us all like this. Yeah, how did I do it? Uh, road. Mm-hmm. A little bit more. There we go. Gotta have a robe. Oh my gosh, I need resources again. Okay, now I need to go farm my money again. Like it's starting to get late. I mean, you feel kind of fast. He was trying to take me out. Oh, no wood. They need wood now. Okay. Lovely. Excuse me. What's going on over here? I welcome you. Farewell. Oh, nothing important, I guess. Let's go buy these blue pants for his bow. And the arrows. Now I'm broke again. I need linen thread? Where the freak do I get linen thread from? Oh my gosh. Who are Be welcome, you? Stranger. Be welcome, stranger. Can I help you with something? I lost my bow, or maybe someone stole it. I'm not sure. Never mind, it doesn't matter. I'm in need of a new one. Could you please craft one for me? I'll bring you a new bow. I don't even have a bow, so... I don't know what to tell you. I need to get the stuff for it. What do you sell? Best goods in the valley. You don't sell anything. Have a good I day. Need. Edwin. I don't think I've ever talked to Edwin before. <laughs> Hail, friend. My wares never disappoint. Oh, so you still you sell stone stuff and wooden. All right. If y'all enjoyed, if y'all enjoyed, please be sure to like, subscribe for more content. Um, it's gonna be pain editing, all it is. Uh, it's first time editing something so long. Um, and yeah, we'll see y'all in the next one. Next one is definitely gonna be Rise of the Ronin. Yeah. Peace out.